people, no black. We're used to, sorry, I just need to click my screen. We're used to hearing things about the, the, the journey to the Caribbean, like um, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish, difficulty with finding uh, accommodation, the early, the racism. Um, we know that Notting Hill Carnival really began as a camaraderie thing amongst the Caribbean community because of the murder of Kelso and so on. We're used to those kind of work, those stories, and we're used to stories of work and problems. Yes, you could get work in the NHS, but we understand that it's been difficult to get promotion. And, you know, there's now a big diversity drive to try and address some of these imbalances over the so many years of late. But what I'd like us to share is we often miss what it is to be human in all of this on the side of um, what I did, um, what it was like. So I want to focus here to get to, to you with you guys on just what it was like coming. So I want to say, where, why did you come as a young child, as an elderly, uh, sorry, not elderly, but as a, a, a more a young, a young child, a baby, a toddler, a, an infant, a teenager, early teens, 20s, or some people a little bit older. So I want to say, focus just a little few minutes and have a little discussion. Why did you come? What age did you come? And what I want to capture is what it really felt like leaving where you came from, what family or who was looking after you. And then what it felt like first coming here, your first impressions. And I want to focus on what you felt, the colours, the, 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 the environment and what it smelt like even. You know, there's real human stuff, which we don't capture. Because I know that these things existed, but we kind of, it's another part of our story. So it'd be really nice for us to, to have an understanding and to have this in our history book of understanding of what it was like on a very personal level for you to leave where you left at whatever age it was and come here. And what I wanna focus on today is first, if we could spend the first half an hour or so just sharing what it was like leaving, leaving where you left, what age were you? Who was looking after you? Who did you leave behind? What did it feel like in that moment of leaving behind? Is that okay? That sound okay? That sounds good. So would you like to go around the screen, Audrey, and ask each person's... Um, um, I'm happy okay. for anyone who wants to feel they want to share. Do they put hand up or should I just ask? I can see some names. Um, it's uh, a, yes. Campbell? Yeah, okay. I came here in 1964, age 21. I leave behind my two children. One was um, 18 months and the other was about four, yeah. I left because my husband, I, I, I caught him cheating on me. He wasn't my husband then, but he was my, 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 my children's dad. And, uh -huh. um, and my fear was booked from I was 14. I should have come here from then. Wow. I, I didn't want to come. When they're looking for me, they couldn't find me. <laughs> so it was always left at the travel agent, BOAC them days. And, um, and they said, well, if she wants to come, she can always come. And when I did make up my mind to come, I was pregnant with my last child. And when I, I told them, they said, no, you, you, um, you, you have to stay there until when you have the baby. Knowing what I know now, I, I, I should have just come. Don't tell them anything, you know? But anyway, I came, came up to my aunt and they were, I was living in Kensal Rise at the time. And I look around it, the place is so strange to me. But first of all, I, I landed at home. Heathrow Airport, but it wasn't Heathrow then. It was called London Airport. And I, I was waiting there because I thought that's where they were going to pick me up from. They didn't tell me that I have to get on a coach and go to Victoria. So I was there, I brought up my brother's children and we were there and my sister-in-law said she rang up and they said, a, a well, there is a well-dressed woman here because them days you wear gloves, I had on my hat, I had on a navy blue suit, 
accordion pleated skirt and thing. And they said, there's a well-dressed woman here with some children. Maybe that's the person you're looking for. <laughs> and she said, um, she told them to tell me to go to Victoria. Anyway, I didn't go to Victoria to see how trusting I was actually, because there was a woman there waiting for her son and mm -hmm. he didn't arrive. And she said, oh, you've been waiting so long. I'll take it to where you want to go. And I just went with this woman. He's a black woman anyway, but I just went with her. But you, you see, you're so trusting them days. And we went, they were still at Victoria waiting for us. Them days, not like now you have mobile phone, you could phone and say, well, I'm on my way. So she um, dropped me there. They weren't there, but they, they had a flat in Paddington they were living. And um, I, I stayed there until when they arrived. Anyway, my take on it is uh, when I came here, I was shocked to, because I start, came here Saturday and I start work Monday. And when we got to the bus stop, I couldn't believe it. The amount of people I saw going rushing for this bus. You know, <laughs> and my aunt said, come on, come on, come on. Here. Otherwise, they'll, you know, they'll push you off. And we got on the bus and we went to work. And it was like that for quite a while for me. Mm. And then one day I overslept. Mm. And, and I... I didn't, I said, I'm not going to work today. And I went up. I mean, if so for some time, I would realize I'd just come. I was looking up the road, down the road, because it was so quiet. It was different. And, and there was a school nearby, I didn't realize, and the children were playing. And I thought, it's such a different time. During, I came in August, so it was still warm. And I don't want to take up to because there's plenty of us to talk. But mm -hmm. I, the one thing I must say is when it turned winter now and the trees are bare, I said to my aunt, why do, why do they have so many dead trees around the place? Why don't they cut them down? Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were dead. <laughs> she said, no, no, no. They grow, they grow back home. They get back the leaves in, in the summer. So that was my take on that bit. So I leave some, I rest some for the others to say. Okay. All right. Yes, thank you. That was really, really nice. I just want to ask you a question. You know, when you said you came and you started work um, like two days later? Yeah. Um, did you have a choice in the date? Did you choose to come so close to the time you had to start going out no, to but, work? But when I was, as I said, my favorite book from I was yeah. 14. But then during that time, it changes. And you could only come if you have a work voucher. And so I came up by what they call a work voucher. Even though I had a British passport, I came up with a British passport because I had my passport before Jamaica became independent. But by the time I came up, they, they were independent. So I brought up two because I was confused. I don't, because some people in Jamaica said, oh, if you go for the British passport, you can't come back. And I, I was just confused. So I, I had both J Jamaica passport and the British passport. So when I landed at the airport and thing, I, I showed them too, both, because, you, you know, I'm so innocent. I showed them, I did, the, the, the man put up, said, put away that one and just use this one. Mm -hmm. And that's the one I came, um, I came on. And um, yeah, so that, that, that was it. I, 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 because I came on a voucher, my aunt had to apply for a voucher for where she was working for me to come out now. Because that was the, the condition. Um, where did you work? I was working in this um, canteen um, with her. Um, she was the cook. And I was working set in the chaos bit there, mm -hmm. selling the sweets and the cigarettes and whatever. Yeah, so this was at um, National... We, we, the national, we, you know, we, the, you, um, you get your numbers. What's it called again? Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, we, it's a government place. Got insurance. Yes, national insurance. Yes, uh, in Chep's Chepster Place, it was. I remember, uh, number twenty-seven bus we had to take from, <laughs> uh, uh, from um, summer down in. Yeah, so that was where I was was working. And I, I didn't, I, you know, she was a cook and I was working in the kiosk. Yes. 
Um, you said you left, just one question I'm going to ask you. You said you left because your husband was um, cheating. So yeah. did you, you didn't, your reason for leaving was to... My reason for leaving was I thought, well, you know, I, w I would, um, I, I, I'm not going to put up with this. Uh, and so I leave. And so I left because my fear was always there. There was mm. no problem. But then when I came now, my aunt said, she, I, she asked me what happened. And I, t I told her about me and Carly. And she said, oh, no, never mind. There's plenty of men here again. I said, no, I'm going to send for him. She said, what? <laughs> and I was in a, a, um, a partner before I arrived here. These people, they don't joke, you know. I was in a partner three, that started three weeks before I arrived. So as soon as I get my wages, it was seven pounds. The five pounds kept, it was out of it for partner that I, I, I didn't know I was in. So it's, yeah, so. Who put you in the partner? Huh? Who put you in the partner? My aunt. Oh, wow. The partner was starting three weeks and they know I was coming up. So they just put me in the partner. And thing. so that's what, how I, and then I, I use it, send for him, and then I save again and use it, send for my children. So that's that's how we did it, yeah. Thank you. And in the, end, in the end, he still end up cheating. I should, I should have left him out there, honey. He's dead mm -hmm. now, anyway. You must have said bad things about the death. Mm. <laughs> yeah. that's a, that, thank you. That's very insightful. Um, yeah. that, that, that part of the, the, the coming over. Anybody else? Thank you so much for so, so far. Okay. Campbell. Anybody else, Yvonne? Oh, Lynette? Yes. I, I, oh, came, I came in 1964. I, actually, I came here to do nursing. And I came direct, direct to the hospital. I was 20 years at the time. And I did the nursing for until I was 65. Wow. My reason for coming here is because I had liked nursing and I couldn't get in in Trinidad. So uh, my mother got a friend to send me, send me a, a booklet and I applied to different hospitals and I chose the one nearest to London. So I went to, to, to Middlesex. I went to Middlesex. I was in Middlesex, not far from Shepherd's Bush. So I could have taken the bus from Shepherd's Bush to go and do my West Indian shopping. When I first came here, I came here, we was all dressed up as usual, gloves and hat and whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, but before I came here, when I, I came by boat and when I came here, one of the sailors wanted to marry me. So he said, took me to his parents. And I said to him that I didn't come here to get married. I came here to do nursing. And he was... <laughs> very happy with me but that is when we was in Vigo in Spain and when I get when I got to London we, we went to Southampton and from Southampton I had to take a train to Victoria and from Victoria there was someone waiting for me with the name placard with my name on it saying St. Bernard's Hospital and I went there when I went there the place was all gray and I said oh my god what sort of place is this and these big buildings I was so frightened and the next day I had to go to the sewing shop for them to measure me for my uniform. And the following day I was at work. Wow. When come Christmas, Christmas I, came here, I came here in October. But when Christmas day, when they were serving all the meals, I was bawling my head off. And oh. they said, come to me and they said, what's the matter? I said, I want my mother. I want my mother. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we laughed, but it was traumatic. My mo I had no one here. I left my mother, father, and four, and four brothers. I had no family here at all. It was just me and me alone, just making friends. And the thing is, the hospital I went to, I was the only black. Everybody was Irish, English, and I was the only black person there. And I felt so strange. It was so, so strange when you go to the canteen, it's just me. And everybody was white. Mm. Everybody wanted to know what I was crying for. And I said to them, I miss my parents. Mm. How old were you? I was 20. Mm. I, wanted, I said, I wanted to go back home. So they took me back to the nursing home. And um, the, the, the warden, she came and she said to me, okay, just have a rest, whatever. 
And the next day I was back to, back to work as usual, back to work, which I didn't really, the, the, the ward that they put me in, I didn't really like the ward that they put me in. And I was crying again. And the sister said to me, what are you crying for? And she, I said, oh, I don't like it here. I want to go back home. So she said, no, no, it's OK. You'll settle down as the time goes by. You'll settle down. And I actually, I did settle. I was there, I was there for about nine months. And the matron never put me in school. So I, I met another lady who was black, and but she lived out. And she said to me, why are you in that uniform? I said, well, the matron said that um, I did not pass my test. She said, oh, you mean you did not pass the test? She said, apply to another hospital. So I applied to another hospital. And when I applied to another hospital, the, the matron accepted me. And um, I went there, did the test, passed the test. And then when I came back, I told the matron at St. Bernard's that I went for an interview. And she said to me, I have, I sent for you and you know, I can send you back home. But wow. it's only because of the, the, the matron, I said her name was Miss Johns. It's only because of Miss Johns that why I am sending you back, sending you there. And then I went to Epsom and I spent, there is where I do my training and spend time with different, there were different, um, different people. There were Irish, there was Mauritian, Jamaican, Grenadian, there was a whole mix there. And I was more happy there. And there it was until I qualified. That's me. What did you qualify? Which nursing angle did you um, Psyche. Psychiatric nursing. Yes. yes. Did your um, parents and other family remain in the Caribbean yes, or did they, they eventually? remain in the Caribbean, but I did send for my mother um, a couple of times, which she enjoyed, but my father would not travel. Mm. So I had to keep on going back to Trinidad to visit and back and go back and forward. Thank you. These are really fascinating um, insights. There's somebody who put a message in the chat. Chantelle, do you want to ask your question? Do you want to unmute and ask it, please? Uh, thank you. Um, I just have a question for the ladies. Um, I would probably be deemed as uh, your granddaughter, maybe. I joined um, the chat because I was interested in listening to your stories. And I just wanted to know that if you didn't have family here, would you have left home? Well, I left home for a purpose. I left home in order to do, I couldn't get into nursing. Mm. So that's why I left home. If I had gotten into nursing, I wouldn't have been here. Okay. And then do you consider England to be your home? This is a question for everybody. Do you consider England to be your home or? As you mentioned, uh, Miss Avon, about you were from Trinidad. Is that still your home? Well, as my mother always said to me, when I'm coming home, I said I'm coming home. And when I'm coming back, I say I'm coming home. So I'm okay. <laughs> So I spend most of my time here, actually, because I spent 20 years in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And now I'm 80. And I came here when I was 20. So I spent 60 years here. So then here more becomes my home and Trinidad becomes my holiday home. Because mm -hmm. I go home every six months. Wonderful. I was locked down in Trinidad for two years. Wow. Nice though. Yes. The behind. <laughs> There's some other questions. There's Lynn and Ivy. Lynn, would you like to ask your question? I no, she the answer question. the question what the girl asked when you came here about? Yes, I'm saying there's a lot of people come here when they didn't have any, even though they didn't have family here, because they come to work. I could, now, when I come over here, I come to join my husband-to-be. And I come in the December month, it was very, very cold, frosty, and icy. When I come to Victoria Station, he come and meet me. And they bring me this big green coat with all, it got the fur around the sleeve and the fur around the, around the neck. But when you put it on, if you folks know donkey back home, when you pad up the donkey, that's how the coat was heavy when I put it on. Mm. My goodness, I could not walk, the coat was too heavy. So when I get in the car, 
to sit down. I couldn't sit down properly because the cold was too heavy. Anyway, when I on my way to where I'm going to live, I see all these houses, this building. I thought they're factories. Because I'm saying that's why so many people coming over here. Because they have they have work. And it's when I go to where I'm going to stay now and see the building, I say, oh, that's how it is. These are houses. But when you look and see the people them, some more coming out of the mouth. And this, they haven't got any cigarette in their mouth. They haven't got any pipe. And you wonder how some more can come out the mouth and they haven't got cigarette and pipe in their mouth. So it go on and go on until when I start working, I come the 19th of December and I start working the 31st of December. And some more coming out of my mouth too. <laughs> So then I realized that is something happening. So when I ask, they say, the heat in our body coming out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we didn't experience anything like this. Mm -hmm. And my dear, it, it, it cold, 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 as you know, your fingers feel as if it's falling off. And as the sister was saying, she cried, she wanted to go back home. I didn't come as a nurse. I come to work as domestic. And I start in the hospital and they put me on as orderly afterward. My dear, when I start working, I get seven pounds, seven pounds a week, just like my sister was saying. And I take out and I put in the partner. And the partner is what I use to send for my children, my two children back home. Mm -hmm. So this partner was going, 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 going. And if you're careful, you could use it wisely. You could see the benefit out of it. Mm -hmm. And I go back home to see my, my family, my partner. And then I take my mom over and she spent six precious years with us until she died. But it was so cold. I didn't think I would leave it out. Mm -hmm. I went to my doctor and told him, and he said, I'm sending you to her center, my sister's hospital. Inside is psychiatrist and psychology. Mm -hmm. Yes, is that is that yeah. yes? I'm not sending to a psychiatrist because you're not mad. But I have a lot of ladies like you come from home and want to go back and talk to that person. And that's what I did. And that's helped me. Because by talking, I find out that there's a lot more like me that want to go back home, cry. They used to have a song say, tears on my pillow. Mm -hmm. Tears on our pillow, not just me. I'm sure there's tears on all of us pillow that we want to go back home. Mm -hmm. Because it's like you jump out of frame and drop in fire. Mm -hmm. So we didn't, have this, we didn't have this cold weather and then we come out from the heat and drop into something else. So mm. it, it was something that we never experienced. But thank God, we live it out. My first job was into a restaurant called Laughing Cow in Hyburn. Mm. So mm. when I write back home, I say, I write and send my mommy say, I don't ever know that cow can laugh. <laughs> because where I'm working, it's called Laughing Cow. So it was such a joke. And you know, we used to take the 172 bus from Brixton to Holborn. Mm. And the 172 bus run and run and run. I have to meet up Brixton to meet my friend, the one that get the job for me, every morning. And it's so cold, and I have to go out there to meet her, you know? But mm. God take us through it. So through it all, we learn to trust in Jesus. Through it all, we learn to trust in God. Mm. And we are here now to say thanks to God for all what you have done for us, because he's the one that take us to it. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue to give him thanks. And as the sister was saying, they asked if it's your home. Mm -hmm. Which which home? Is this your home? This is not my home, but I'm here. So I just have to give thanks to God and say, what is to be will be, it's all in God's hands. So I leave it to him. And let me say thanks and praise because he's worthy of our praise. And our thanks by the rivers of Babylon. We wept when we remember Zion. When we remember our home sweet home, we cried. You mm. remember those lambs say home sweet home? 
Mm -hmm. Lam said, home sweet home. When we remember Zion, we cried by the rivers of Babylon. God take us to it. And God is continue to be here with us. Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you for that. Oh, dear. The coming was um, a lot of the time people don't understand, especially the younger generation now, the, the children in primary school of the Caribbean community and other communities looking at the Caribbean community. Don't necessarily understand why you came, the circumstances you came from, That's it. and how it felt. You know, on a human, mm -hmm. human kind of level, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. personal, very, in, very much a lot of feelings and a lot of loss, a lot of trying yes. to. Yes. Also, as you just highlight in, there's something we don't talk really. Can you capture? You're coming from a place that now we have far more TV. We're talking to people. We've got the oh. phone. We can see yes, the place. Yes. You couldn't really see the communities you were going into. You had no idea. No. no. Why, why didn't someone tell everyone how cold it was going to be? Why it, it, was there no kind of um, insightful information given to you in in the Caribbean as to what it was going to be like in terms of climate, food, accommodation before you came? But even if they tell you, you wouldn't know because you, you don't know. You come to see what it's like. You wouldn't, you know. You wouldn't understand what they're talking about if they tell you that it's so cold. Because, I, sorry, sorry, could I say this? I pick up my washing one day and I put it on the bed. And I'm saying to myself, I didn't know when you wash clothes and put outside, it's starch. I didn't know it's starch itself. And you don't have to starch. You know, back home we starch our clothes and we iron it. So I take up the clothes and I put them on the bed. When I come back from out, the bed wet up. <laughs> because this part out of the bed gone. That was frost. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I think it was starch. You don't have to starch. They just put them out there and they starch. So my bed was soaking wet. Oh. We have to sleep on the floor that night because we couldn't sleep on the bed. The bed was soaking wet. Because we don't know. We don't know yeah. what it's like. Yeah. It's trial. It's living and experiencing and finding out. You said something as well. You said, this is not your home. Home is home. Why is this? How long have you been here? Oh, I come over here when I was 25. And now I am 84. Recording in progress. Have you heard have me? You heard, 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 heard. Yes. yes. We can hear you, Lynn. Your picture's changed. We can hear you. You've gone. We've lost you. Lynn and Ivy. I think someone was working out the film. I could see the camera moving. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, thank you. Come back in. We want to hear more and join and listen to others. So we'll just, you know, while you're sorting out your, your connection, carry on. <laughs> Something I wanted to say. Yes. Hello. Yeah, this is Sheila. Yeah, I'm here. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Okay. Who's speaking now? Sheila. Go yes, ahead, Sheila. Uh, yeah, something I wanted to say. Um, I remember going into work one morning and the lady said to me, Happy New Year, Sheila. I said, <laughs> what? Happy New Year. I didn't even know it was New Year because it wasn't a bank holiday in them days. Uh -huh. I was so upset. Mm -mm. We don't work on New Year's Day. No. It's a bank holiday. I was so upset. I was, she said, didn't you know it was? I said, no. So you mm -hmm. go to work and you don't know it because, and I used, uh, later on, I used to work at London Transport and I had to work Christmas Day. Now they don't mm -hmm. do that. You see, mm -hmm. so these people, young people don't realize how lucky they are. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to work Christmas Day crying because I didn't was on home to see my children open the, 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 the presents. Mm -hmm. uh, but all those things have changed. You see, buses don't run on Christmas Day, trains don't run on Christmas Day, but you know, it's a, mm -hmm. a, a proper holiday, bank holiday. Mm -hmm. Yes, so when you look back, there's a lot of things that really, really hurt you. Mm -hmm. uh, but you just get over it, put it that way. Get over God it. God take us through it, yes. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I think we had a um, hand raised from Linda. Are you still there, Linda? Hello. Yes. Hello. Um, thank you, ladies. It's um, it's a real pleasure um, being here. Um, my parents um, are, are still with us and they both came from Dominica um, back in the late uh, 50s. Um, um, my mother now um, has Parkinson's and dementia um, and my father um, is uh, her official carer, but they, they lived more or less all of their lives here and the stories that they tell are amazing. Sister um, Ivy. It makes me think, <laughs> why would you leave, um, you know, the, 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 the warmth and, and paradise to come to a very cold, miserable, grey country? Um, but they both, both well, did for work. They, they met each other here. Um, and my dad worked for British Rail. Um, he worked long hours, worked very hard. Um, and the sad thing is, I think for for quite a few people, they didn't get the the respect um, and the. I, I mean, basically, they worked their lives for. Um, for this country and didn't get much in return mm -hmm. um and i think that uh th that i find really hard to to deal with um that you know they have to scrimp and save when literally they would give their life for for their job they they give they gave everything yes they got paid um but not at the same rate as their counterparts mm -hmm. um you, uh, my, my my father came over they both came over by boat um one my mother um arrived in um i think the southampton and my dad was portsmouth um and they both lived um, uh, in paddington um and his story was when he was on the train into London, he, was, he saw all these chimneys and he was thinking to himself, wow, you know, there's so many bakers, everybody's baking bread. You know, this is like, this is amazing. But he also said how cold it was. Uh, we don't have winters now as they did back then. And that the toilets were outside um, and that you had to make the trip from your your room that you shared to the to the outside toilet in the middle of winter. That was no easy feat. That was something that they had to do. Um, but they found a happiness. They decided to stay here. I, I've asked many times, why didn't you go back home? But you know, they said, well, they had their, their family, myself and my siblings, and they made this country their home. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking forward to um, going to the Caribbean to make the Caribbean, to go back to Dominica and live there um, at some stage um, in, in the near future. Um, but for them, England is their home. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. Anybody else like to share what it was like leaving and where you left and who you left and your first impressions of coming to London, to England rather, sorry. Lynette, Esther. Oh, you've got a hand, we've got a hand on Marcia. Hello, Marcia. Hi. Um... I'll do mine from because I went to school here in um, the high school. I started high school here. So what time did you, you came at what age? I came over when I was, um, it, I was literally three days from my 12th birthday. Um, but I came over in 67. 
And um, we we end up at we all I always remember it was called a playing boring seven or seven. Um, it was me, my sister, and two of my cousins. Um, and when we came, is that as far as I thought, I was leaving my mom because my grandmother was known as my mother. I never knew any other mother. And when I came here, my mom, the, the woman that we met said, I'm your mother and you call me mom. She's not your mom. And um, she stopped us from communicating with our grandmother. So we were, we were totally in, what's the word, um, disarray, not knowing, you know why he's not knowing our identity because we thought our grandmother was our, our mother. And now we're coming here and we are told, no, she's not your mother, I'm your mother. And this is your step your stepfather, and you call him dad. Um I came, as I said, I came in the May, and I was I was too old to go into the juniors, so I went into the high school. They test me. And I was a bit back. So I, instead of going into the second year, I, I was started from the first year. I went to school. Um, you know, you're sitting in the chair and you're balancing back on the chair. Where is the person talking? One of my schoolmate kicked the chair from under me. That's okay. And um, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I end up beating up, beating up the person because you know that's what that's what I know when I was home. If any, because where I was living, you know, um, we had we we defend ourselves. So is what I knew to do. Mm. So, um, but the thing is, um, in the end, she and I became very good friends. She knew that she couldn't take you know take advantage of me. So we became very good friend. Um, hey, my mom was very good at using her hand and her fist. So what we never used to do back home is what um, we end up getting here. So we get we get beaten to or to try and bring us in line in what she wants us to do. Mm. I meet you. She's gone home to be with the Lord. Um, but me and my sister, we we still, you know, we still keep in touch fairly often. Um, at school, I, I like sports. And going, sorry, going back, um, become when I came, we didn't have a, a think, I think we was one of the lucky ones that when I say that, is that when we came, we didn't have to use the lottery in outside. Mm. We had put it in the house. Mm. So the house that we moved into was fairly new. Mm -hmm. And um, we had hot water with uh, the, the, the fireplace. The light on. Boiler. So we were able to get hot water that way also. Um, yes, when we breathe, the smoke is coming out of the mouth and we are very cold. Um, and we make it a bit good for us because we came in the su summertime and then by the winter, we was already start getting to know the different weather because going into school and mixing around others, you know, we, we get to learn to know more regarding the, um, <clears throat> the weather situation. Oh. So, um, well, I remember one day I, my mom, my mom asked me to put some washing outside. And I went outside in just a short sleeve. And my mom shouted, Marcia, come inside, it's cold out there. But I couldn't feel, I couldn't feel that it was cold. I suppose the heat from the Caribbean was still in me. Uh, so that's what I remember really, I'm um, 67. Um, love sports, put myself into different sports things to do to mm. occupy myself yeah and I met brothers I met brothers and sisters that I never knew I had so that's it really 
You didn't know, you were 12 coming over. You didn't know that you had other brothers and sisters here. No. Mm -mm. Okay. That's what I'm saying to you. Um, as far as I I knew, my grandmother, uh -huh. my, mother, my the grandmother I was I was up with. <coughs> my children and no. Were you no, there? Own, or did you have when I came here, I came to my mother. Did you live with your grandmother, just you two, or were there other family or or other children mm -hmm. or relatives it was just it was just me me and my sister live with my father's mother but i had another sister who lived with my mother's mother but she was already over here mm -hmm. but in those days you didn't really click where you know where they were mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when i came here i knew yeah. that mm -hmm. uh, another sister and about two two sisters and two more brothers Two brothers, yeah. So you had a a good, uh, you know, a loving family experience home, and it was different when you came here mm -mm. in the beginning. Yeah, at home, yeah, it was it was a lot better back home. You were because it was free, you know. You um, you're free to do to go and do you know mm -hmm. do different things so long as you do your homework, you know, your work at home, cleaning up the place and that. But um, when you come here, when I came here. Um, is my mom had to go out to work and she was out to work more or less every day, early morning. So it was up to me and my, you know, biggest, I was I'm the eldest one. So to take care of um, the brother, the younger brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes she keep me from school. You know? right. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose I'm, that's from the school side. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm Ivy and I'm with Lynn. I'm sure we sharing the phone because having separate phone, there's a clash. <laughs> I'm new to the group, basically. Hmm. But my experience is similar to the other ladies. Can I just stop you one second? I want please speak, but I you are, I did notice Faye and someone else. I know Faye, you've got Paulette rather. You got your hand up, and I think someone Faye said in the chat that uh, put there was a message came up that you wanted to speak. So um, yeah, we'll all do it. We do it all. Just letting you know you, you've been noticed. Yeah. Okay. Are you speaking? Sorry. So is Faye going to speak before me? As she was waiting. It's you up to you guys. I'm Ivy. Go ahead, Ivy. Ivy. I think so Ivy I came up earlier. Shelley, do you know who what the order is? Sorry, um, Ivy, go ahead, and then uh, Faye can go next. That's fine. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank, thank you. Okay, my story is similar to the lady in terms of age and timing of coming. I was, I came when I was eleven, but it was two weeks before my twelfth birthday. But I came on the visa to join my parents. And that was because my dad left me, my mom, when I was four and he was newly married. He actually left her pregnant. So she had a daughter while he was there. So we always knew we were going to come to England to join him at some point. Mm -hmm. So my mother came first and she was to join him 63 kind of, yeah. So she was here three years before she was able to send for the children that she left behind in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. She was already married to him. Mm -hmm. But when the time came for her to come, she took the decision that she couldn't take all her children from her mother as a cultural thing now. So she was going to leave one of us behind mm -hmm. with granny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So my step, my brother came and a cousin because she and her sister were here. Mm -hmm. So we came through to join our parents and similar, I'm talking about 67, it was Christmas Eve. This, it was so, we were should have come from the day before, mm -hmm. but the weather was so bad in, and her plane had to go through New York. So it was so bad that in New York that they had to delay the flight 
Anyway, come through New York, got to London, Christmas Eve. I told him everything was prepared for Christmas, British style. That was welcoming. But when we came through the airport, if you know that near Heathrow Airport, there's a coach station. Not, and my, mm -hmm. so this is my cousin, mm -hmm. five-year-old child. So she did it, she said, look who was. <laughs> I mean, we had left the jump, we had left, you know, going, coming to Kingston Park, the JS <laughs> bus terminal. And so you saw so many buses there. Mm -hmm. But when you saw all the coaches in England, which wasn't really buses, it was a coach, mm -hmm. the coaches. And she said, look who was. And mm -hmm. as we got nearer, we came to Brixton. As we got nearer now, and she saw the houses, she said, what a holy per prison. <laughs> I mean, as again, I say it was a five year old responding because oh, when we came through, if you know, on the way from Spanish town to Kingston, when you go down Camp, Camp Park where the prison is and the barracks. Mm -hmm. So to her, all these flats, they look like the same thing she just left in the high walls around mm -hmm. them. She, she, you know, she thought, why there's so much prison? And well, to, you know, so that's just from that perspective. Oh. But for me now, I came, I was doing the 11 plus in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And then when I came here, because they wanted me to come before 12 years old, because if you got to 12, you had to pay the adult fare. Mm -hmm. And to get that 99 pound ch mm -hmm. children's pay rather than the head of fair, mm -hmm. I was pulled out of school during the holiday, the mm -hmm. Christmas holiday, and brought to England, leaving my friends behind. And uh, come to England now in the January to start school. Then the whole education system, they didn't just take you to school, I had to go to this interview at the education department on Acre Lane at the time. And my first idea of what was wrong, she was asking me, she was asking me about, oh, she came out, Ivy Reynolds, and I put my hand up, you know, disciplined Jamaican school child, you hear your name, you put your hand up, and say, I said, oh, where's your sister? I said, no, I'm Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> and I went in with my mom for the interview and she couldn't believe I'm speaking the way I was speaking to say I was doing 11 plus my mom was saying can I go to the grammar school because I would have been going I was down to go to St. Jacob High School mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. so she said oh no you haven't oh, been to primary school in this country so that that's not going to be possible and so you know so mom would say well can she go to dick shepherd school and they said oh no we're going to send you to sorry we're going to send you to parkside school and parkside school in brixton was you know like they wow. it was just a secondary school but anyway to cut a long story short the old education system basically went against me in that first wave, just like the nurses were not expected to be high achievers. Mm -hmm. And so I went through the school system, changing school three times. And mm -hmm. then I said that I went to college, Brixton College for a year. And that was, and, you know, mm -hmm. and it was just, no. So I left school at 19, refusing to go to university doing the evening classes. I went and I got work with the civil service, work with the home office for five years, and then I thought, that's it, I'm going back to Jamaica. Mm -hmm. But I'm the reverse. My mother never support my going back to Jamaica. And I'm still here. And it, it was only when I was 60 and realized that they changed the pension age to 66. That's when I decided, no, I'm not going to work more than 40 odd years. I should have got my pension and I'm not going to work anymore supporting Britain. So that's when I went to university, applied and go to university. And I finished my degree when I was 63. Oh. And after that COVID came in, oh. but you know, it's a, it's a whole lot of experience and I strongly support all what is going on in recording the, the history of 
of us as black, which mm. is something I took part in when I was at university in the Oral History Society. Mm. And I did a year with them just recording, you know, because they now realize it is important mm. to have this oral history. So in fact, while I was at university, what, what that's where the relationship built up with Sister Thomas, because my dissertation was on the elderly and, and the media, the digital in that how it affects them. And Lynn was my <laughs> case study, so to speak, mm -hmm. for my dissertation. Yeah. So the relationship goes on, and that's why I'm still here with her, exactly. sharing Zoom and things like that. Yes. So she tried to remember. She's not a bad student, but <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I think yes, I strongly support, and I'm proud of what you're doing in your project. And I think there's so much more of it need to go on. Thank you. Amen. Someone raised a question. What was your What was your degree? I did it in media communication and journalism. Oh, wonderful. And you keep mm. strong. Yeah. Mm. But uh, to the end, I said that I just concentrated on the media and communications, mm. not the journalism, because I know I was not going to be going to join the crowd. <laughs> and the you doing, do, do you think you're doing now? You're retired, you've got the time, you've got the energy and health. Are you doing what you wanted to do when you had, when you were 12, 13, 14, coming up, but didn't have the opportunity to do? Was there a burning something in you that never got satisfied that you're now doing, you know, education wise? Yes, I would have, my passion would have been to be a teacher. Most of the people in my family, they are teachers. And I think I still have that inkling towards teaching and like, get into that mode. So I personally took the opportunity. So I, you know, within organization, like within my church. Mm -hmm. So I was a sort of like Sunday school, but Sabbath school teacher. I was part of the Pathfinder Club movement, similar to the Girl Guide. I got to the level of director and, you know, so it all involved them yeah, working on honors mm -hmm. and things like that. So for me personally, I decided that, or I found out for me to be personally satisfied and I was in the position to be able to do that with the support. My mother was very strong and even my family in Jamaica about education. Yeah. And maybe I should say this, my grandfather came here in the fifties, but he had only spent three years mm -hmm. and he's saying that he could not bring his wife and children to this country because their position in Jamaica didn't warrant it. Okay, they were able so, to stay. So he, so he can't, you know, we had a lot of counsel from him mm. and thing. And so my, my mother and two brother came here and no one else is here. <laughs> everybody's back home or in America now. So, but it, one of the things was my daddy said, you know, after three, after we're here at a point, he said to my mother, you want all his children with him. Mm -hmm. So my mother had to send for my sister. So mm -hmm. we came 67, she came 70. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that, my mother's desire was like, as I say, her family is in position. They have a family plot. So she wanted to be buried next mm -hmm. to her mother. Mm -hmm. So when she did pass, she went home. And when she went home, my dad said she want, he wanted to be buried next to her. Mm -hmm. So when he passed three years ago, mm -hmm. we took his body home. So now the nine children they had, both here and in Jamaica, all nine children are here in England. God, we survived Brixton. <laughs> and we all live in and around Brixton, Towson, Brixton, Clapham, Stockwell. But we are all alive. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we give God thanks, you know, but I said we are alive here and they are resting in Jamaica. So that causes us to have to go home 
occasionally mm. keeping the tie yes. with Jamaica and our extended family there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you. That's a wonderful story. That's definitely true. You're never, well, we're never too old anyway. To start or continue or to do what we want to do. Thank you. Um, Shirley, who's next? Is it Pauline or Paul? Faye. 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 Yeah, Faye's with me. So go ahead, Faye. <laughs> Hello. Hello, um, ladies. I'm in the car. Hi. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm in the oh, car. Um, Hello. Well, my journey began when I was nine years old. This, this is my thing that wins, isn't it? Uh, Elsie, can I ask you your please? Your journey? Elsie? Hello? Can I, hi, dear, darling. Can I please ask you I to meet you? Off, Wonderful. Thank you. Go ahead, Hi. <laughs> yes, I came to England when I was nine. And I was born in Guyana and uh, my parents were at the time separated. So I was living with my mother and my younger brother in Guyana and my dad was here in England. Uh, apparently they told me that he'd sent for me two years before but uh, my mother wouldn't send me because I had to travel alone and she didn't, didn't want to part with me at that time. So two years later, I came, I came to England. Um, as I said, I, I traveled alone. I was on the BOAC flight from Guyana to Heathrow. And I've still got the little badge they gave me. It was like an airplane badge. And I've still got that. And the little gloves that I wore <laughs> at the time. Um, so when I arrived here, my father was at the airport waiting for me with a coat because it was on the 10th of December, 1960. Oh my God. Cold. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I had, I'd come with a hat and ribbons in my hair and I had this hat on and a dress that was a plaid kind of dress, but it was made from, I think my mother was smart enough to make it from like a flannel material. So that would keep me warm. Anyway, the coat was appreciated because it was very cold, very mm -hmm. dark. And um, he arrived with um, his partner because he was living with, with uh, this lady who was now to become my mom and who would look after me mm. until I was, yeah, teenage years. Um, my first impression of England, besides the cold and wanting to just be wrapped up in a blanket, was how dark and dull and grey England was. And... <laughs> And settling in was not easy for me because my father and his partner both had to go to work and I was left at home alone with a paraffin heater and oh. my food in a bowl, which I was told what time to put it on the paraffin heater so it could warm up for me to eat during the day, especially wow. school holidays. Um, my school wasn't very far from where I lived. We lived in Shepherd's Bush at the time, Cunningham Road. And uh, my dad and his partner had a, a flat, a big flat on the first floor. That was okay, but I didn't like the smell of the paraffin. I didn't like being at home alone. I was like a latch key child. I had a key around my neck uh, on string for open the door. <laughs> And I, I didn't know any children or any neighbours or anyone, so I was always looking through the window because I had no one to talk to. No one to play to. Um, black and white TV, um, no friends. And I, I missed Guyana terribly. I missed all my friends. Ooh. I missed my school. I missed my grandmother and extended family. I missed my mom and my younger brother. And it was horrible. And I cried, especially when Christmas came. I just wanted to go back home. And mm -hmm. I couldn't. And it was horrible. Mm -hmm. um, but as I settled into school, primary school, which was St. Stephen's School on the Uxbridge Road in Shepherd's Bush, uh, and the, the little church attached to it. Father Wood was the, 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 the vicar then. And 
I made friends eventually and I did settle in eventually but the other thing about living in England was that you either if you had a bath in the house you had to share it with the rest of the occupants in the house uh, so there was would be only one bath and you had to punch for the warm water put money in a in a in a meter for the warm water when we moved from Cunningham Road we moved into Loftus Road in uh, Shepherd's Bush and that house we occupied a basement flat and that basement flat had an outside toilet which was horrendous mm. because the, the cold would come from the top, out of the door to the toilet and at the bottom and your feet would be cold and for the first time I got chilled yeah. away, which was horrible Mm. and the blankets we didn't have quilts then we had blankets which mm -hmm. never kept you warm at all you could have four blankets on the bed and you still would not be warm and there were there yes, were I have. yes there were hot water bottles you could use but then they would go cold halfway through the night so it was quite um it was a miserable time growing up and chill blades was the worst thing because I suffered from them every year mm. in the winter. Um, but as time went by, I got used to it and I got um, climatized, as they say. And I, I went to St. Stephen's School, then I went to Hammersmith County School and then I... Um, I wanted to do nursing. My father wanted me to be a hairdresser. He was going to open, buy a shop, open up, but I couldn't think, couldn't bear having to stand up from maybe seven in the morning until seven at night. So I, I declined that one, but, and I really was interested in nursing, which is what I pursued. And um, I went from nursing, I did midwifery, and then I did health visiting. And that was my final sort of occupation as a health visitor until I retired in 2008 at the age of 56. Mm -hmm. And here I am now as part of Freud and BME and enjoying all the activities that I pursue and thoroughly enjoy the new friendships. Mm -hmm. And But within that time of, of living and growing up, I did get married and I had three daughters and they're all grown up and working. I'm divorced now and I'm very happy. <laughs> survived your trip over, living well now. Sorry? Thank you. You survived your trip over? Yes, when you I did. I did. From Diana to here and uh, now you're living well. I'm climatised now. Mm. Yeah. But I still, I still call Guyana my home, funnily enough. And I've only ever been back there once in all those years, just once, yes. And you were so young when you came. Yeah, yeah. And it's still, that's home. Yeah. Do you know why? Yeah. Because that's where I was born. I feel my roots are there. I've still got cousins, although lots of my family live abroad. And I see them in the various countries that they live in. That's why perhaps I've not been back to Ghana yeah. as often. But, um, but that is home for me. Although I've lived most of my life here, the majority of my life is here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. It's lovely. Um, is it um, who's next, Estella? Paula. Hello everyone, I'm Paulette and um, I was born in Jamaica, but then I left Jamaica um, in 67. Um, I never knew my mum until I was 10, because I was six months when she came up to join my dad and they left um, five girls in Jamaica and I was the youngest of five. Mm -hmm. um, and it always used to bother me why my parents sent for the eldest one first, then the second, and then the third eldest one. And then it left me and my, 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 my sisters two years 
um, older than me in Jamaica to fend for ourselves. I was seven and she was nine at the time. We live in like what we would call the yard. So we had my grandparents' house, what we called up at top, but my, um, my dad's house that he was building, he had built, partly built down a bottom. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so even though we were left there with my grandparents to look after us, they didn't really. But in 67, we finally, the two uh, came up together. Um, I can remember it being very cold. I was wearing a crinoline frilly dress. Um, my mum didn't collect us from the airport because she had to work, but my dad and two of my um, siblings did. I didn't know I had a brother um, who was about seven at the time and um, he hated us. He wanted my mum to send us back home um, because for all these years it was just him alone. And then all of a sudden he was invaded. He previously was invaded by these by five girls from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, but it was nice. Um, having said all of that, mm -hmm. um, and I came up to when I came up to Jamaica, came up from Jamaica, it was very cold, mm -hmm. and um, I went to primary school um, for the first year. Um, that was in Jamaica, that was here. Um, I didn't like it at first because I remember my very first day at school, um, we, we all had to read a page from a book. And for me, I couldn't wait until it was my turn because I know I could read. And when it was my turn to read, I stood up and I started reading and everyone laughed at me, even the teacher because of my accent. And um, that was the last time I actually opened my mouth and spoke um, at school until I went to secondary school. Um, when I went to secondary school, um, that was just as bad. We were always pushed at the back where we couldn't hear what the teachers were saying um, and so forth. And it was in the days of Enoch Powell. Mm. Don't know if anyone remembers Enoch Powell when he used to shout out, you know, keys the nimogs go back home um so it was quite traumatizing really um because we don't get that um kind of treatment um in jamaica um i did to want to jamaica huh? were you going to any form of school in jamaica yeah i went to school right up until the age of 10 when i came here mm -hmm. um yeah, and I was a bright, oh, well, I considered I was a bright child because mm. when I was back home in Jamaica, but then I started going backwards mm. and became very naughty when I was at school. Mm. Um, and I think that was because I think somebody earlier on was saying that um, the expectation is that we're low achievers. Mm. And I thought that was quite sad to hear somebody still saying said that because that still happens today in the school with a lot of the um, black kids. Um, I did want to um, become a social worker, but my mum at the time when I was 16 and I wanted to stay on at school said no, I mm. needed to go and find work so that I can help support the family mm. financially. Um, so I left school and I got a job in the bank. Um, but I didn't like it again, <laughs> but I stayed there for a long, long time. Um, but I'm now a foster carer. Um, yeah, and I have been a foster carer now for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I love it. I just love um, what I do. Um, it's not easy, but there are so many of our kids um, that are so desperately in need. Because they're so stereotyped. Um, nothing has changed mm. from when I was at school in terms of the expectations for them. Um, but um, yeah, um, that's it really about me. There's loads more, but I think that's more than enough. <laughs>
Yeah, thank you. Thank you for now. Thank you. Um, yes, um, Shelley, we can go over a little bit bit longer and I've also got to do my um, presentation thing as well. Yeah, so should we just take uh, another one? Yes, of course, please do. Go ahead. Uh, anyone else? Like to speak at the moment? Helen? Uh, Tanya? No. Jenny? Huh? Gloria? Who's, who's this? Gloria? Are you there, Gloria? Gloria is in her 90s. It would be very good to hear her experience. Oh, yes. yes. Hi, you, Lily. Is Gloria still there? Oh, you're on mute, Gloria. Um, you, Lily. Yes. There you go. Sorry, you, Lily. Shelley, my device has been acting up. Thanks for the opportunity. Yes. Thanks for the opportunity to speak. Mrs. Blackwood stepped away. Oh, okay. Um, I think we're running out of time, but mm -hmm. I'll just briefly say that I was one of the unaccompanied minors who came over. I came over at 14 in 1961. My mother and stepfather were already here. Um, I was left behind for about six months with my grandparents. But because they'd take me out of school, they had to hasten to get me back in school. And I heard someone said earlier that they're an ex-student of St. Jago. So was I. I was taken out of St. Jago. And um, I was an unaccompanied minor. I literally brought myself here, got to the airport, and was told that I couldn't travel alone. So one of the other passengers volunteered to chaperone me. I got to Heathrow in the early hours of the, I think it might have been the 9th of September, having left the day before. And I was at the airport all day. No one was there to pick me up, to pick me up because they misunderstood the time of my arrival. So it was during the day they saw this lonely child sitting there all day. They came to talk to me and was able to get to my aunt's house where was where we would be living in Balham. So uh, my aunt came and, and got me, took me home. And um, probably the week, uh, with, within two weeks or so I was in school. I had gone to Parkside Secondary at Clapham North. <laughs> So um, that was it. I settled in school pretty, um, pretty early. And, um, but uh, the, the, the clash of culture was very unsettling for me. And um, I wasn't really happy. And um, in, in, the, in, in, in about two years, I got pregnant. And one pregnancy led to another and another. So by the time I was 20, I had all my children, but I continued with my education. I pressed on, I got a job, I went to evening classes and I continued to press on. So here I am 60 odd years later, retired. I've since lost two of those children, but I continue and um, I give thanks. God is good. He's kept me through. And that's my short story. Thank, Thank you. you. Mrs. Blackwood is back. I don't know if she wants to say yes. something, Shelley. Okay. No, all right. Okay. That would be nice to hear from her you are. for a few yes. moments, though, because yes. we've yes. gone over time. Hello there, Mrs. Blackwood. Would you like to tell us about your experience when you came in this country? When I when I came here, I came to family who was living in Brixton, Mustin Road, and that's where I went to. I came up on the BOAC airline. 
I, it, at that time, you had all this thing about no, no Irish, no dogs, no. It was all that, you know, you just had to try and keep with your own group that you don't get any problems. But we started up a, a group in St. John's Community Hall and started up summer projects for children from five to 11. And we used to get kids from all over Lambeth. And that was a good thing at the time because the children had nothing to do. So it went on very well. And that's it, you know. Wonderful. Can I just ask you a question? Where, when you yes. left, who, who, where were you living in Jamaica before you came here? Who did you live with? I lived with my grandmother. Any sibling? That's any my other, mother. Any other family? I'm an only child for my mother. Mm -hmm. And my mother left and went to Cuba. Mm -hmm. So I was left with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. But I'd finished school and I had finished school at that time when I came to England. Mm -hmm. So you were working in Jamaica before you came here? Yes, yes, yes. I worked at the Embroidery League in Harbour Street. Doing embroidery, I did a lot of embroidery work. Wow. So when you came here, did you come to do more work, more embroidery or...? in the industry, the clothing, or what did you do? Well, actually, well, actually, I came to further my embroidery skills. I was in the West End. I worked in different factories and things that did embroidery and all that. So we um but it didn't uh, yeah as you Lily said uh, uh, before what I was pregnant and I had one and then I had the next mm. one. So I wasn't able to to finish the embroidery, what I wanted to do. Mm. And so when you came, your first experience, did it meet your expectations? Was it shocking? Was, was the work environment sort of welcome? Well, I came up in August and it was gray like today. Mm. And I couldn't understand how August don't have any sun. But we um, just settled into it. Mm. Yeah. Did you find your mood, did it have any effect on how you felt? No. Just made the best you could. Yes, I had my sister-in-law 
and she um, she looked after me really like I was her daughter. Mm -hmm. that, that was my husband's brother, wife, his older brother. Mm. That's nice. There must have been lots so of. I, I was in good company. I had people that I could trust and they were all good to me. Thank you. Thank you. Just to ask, is everyone okay with us taking a screenshot of yourselves for our Twitter page? If you are not okay with that, you can always um, put your screen, uh, stop screen sharing, for example, stop your video. Otherwise, that would be lovely if we could get you on screen for a screenshot. Just give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you're okay with it or not. Andrew, hey. <laughs> okay. And if you don't mind, your beautiful faces. <laughs> I will hold it, hold it. Nadine, are you on this? Shelley? Yeah, I'm here. We're here. Can Let's I say just say just a quick one? A quick yes. hello, Shelley. Hi, yes. good, yes. Evening. good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's just good afternoon. so good afternoon. Nice. nice seeing you guys. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Audrey as well for working with us again and going to produce all of these wonderful workshops over the next well three 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 to four weeks so thank you audrey much appreciated one once again you know my promise i need to get you guys on video because i need i'm just listening to to, to mommy gloria I, I i tuned in when yuli was speaking and the lady before which i didn't know who it was who was speaking just before yuli as well who was there Ivy. Ivy, Ivy, and what a wonderful stories. So Hi, gonna... Andrew. we've met at the day center, remember Brixton Church? Can you can you wave at me? Hold on, hold on. Uh, I'm with Flynn. Oh hi, yeah. hi. Thank, <laughs> thank you for center your mother attend oh, thank you. Uh, This is the Brixton crew, everyone. This is the Brixton <laughs> crew. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna just something that I think I, something that I'm going to do. I'm gonna speak to my video guy and Shelley and Nadine. What we're gonna do? We're gonna have an open day at the wellness center. I'm gonna get my video guy down and see if he can film our stories. Yeah, because yeah. we need to. We need to hear what you guys have just said over the last twenty minutes. It's bringing a tear to my eye as well, you know, because. Oh. My mum, when she came over, she yes. she used to, she was a seamstress. Um, somebody yes. just said it earlier on. You know, she came and you know she she made um everything. people's suits and all that stuff. Yes, and everything. my grandmother, my grandmother taught her how to do it. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, yes. so when I'm hearing this now, we need to make sure that we get this on um on video. So I'm going to speak to my video guy in the next two weeks and see. Can we have a, a afternoon? Maybe we do it around Christmas time, actually, and we can have food. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be a good excuse to have food, guys. <laughs> that would be a good excuse to have a little Christmas party and a film at the same time, right? Most of us come over in December. We do. And Andrew, yes. I'd yes. like to say, I'd like. Who's speaking? Who's speaking? I can't see. Yuli. Yuli. It's Yuli speaking. Hi, Yuli. Blackwood. I would like to that I would love to have Mrs. Blackwood's story on video. She's a I'm very interesting you. lady. She, she has a great history behind her. And I'm I'll see to it that she gets down to the wellness center to be re recorded. Brilliant. That is my promise. I think and she's at before lockdown, she was before lockdown, she was actually working with someone on a book. I wondered if it might have been Audrey, but it had to do with um, Lawson. What's Mr. Lawson's name? Um, Mr. Lawson. Laws. Mr. Law's daughter. Courtney oh, Law's daughter. Courtney Law's daughter. Oh, it went she was actually in the process of... Um, 
Yes, yes. Right. So I'd love for you to have Mrs. Blackwood record. I will make sure. I worked and... there. I was the youth worker. Wow. I will make sure, and I also want the stories yeah. of the Brixton crew, um, the, the Brixton yeah, crew, yeah. <laughs> to come to come to Croydon and and hear it as well. Yeah, wonderful. Well, thank you so Andrew. much. We have okay, also recorded okay. the session, Andrew, so we will have some information there as well to share with yes, us. Yes, thank you, yes, thank you. Yes, yes. Um, somebody wants to introduce themselves. Somebody just said, but I'm not in charge, yes. so it's not down to me. Whoever that is. Okay, um, so just a quick introduction well, over from to Shelley. Linda. Over to Shelley. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. So a quick introduction from Linda, who's from uh, Black Nations Live, that would like to say a quick hello to to um, you all. And then I'll hand back over to Audrey. We are conscious of time. We are well behind time. So please, um, we will just try and go as fast as we can. Thank you. Bye now. Please, Linda, okay. go ahead. Hello, thank you. Thank you so much. Again, it's wonderful meeting everybody. This is my first time um, with you. Um, I've got um, a, a social media um, platform that I've created. It's been up for a year. Um, it's, it's specifically for the Black diaspora um, to bring our community together to bring our peoples no, together no, for us to um, connect, reconnect, to have our safe space. Um, it's very similar to YouTube and Instagram. So you can upload videos, you can put posts. Um, please create um, an account and talk to people, express. And uh, we have heard many stories today, each individual one unique, um, it, it's, uh, we, we need to document this very, very, um, it's very important that we keep our history um, up to date and it is a true representation of who we are, where we've come from, because it's, it's easily forgotten and in our current climate, um, uh, there's a lot of people who don't want us to remember our history. So please take a look at um, Black Nation. It is for, for us specifically um, from around the world. Um, it's global and it's ours. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, lovely. Over to you, Audrey. Lovely Thank to you. Me. Thank you, everybody. Um, as Andrew said, and you know, Linda, other people, and everyone that's here today really has echoed, that it's important for us to collect our stories and to leave our books and our life story work and our history so that we understand this period of history, which is really, really significant and important. Um, and sadly, we haven't started documenting lots of vast detail of the, 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 you know, the big effect of that big movement from the Caribbean to Europe in, from the late 40s. Um, but we are, and we're collecting them, so it's important for us to, you know, see ways that we can get them together, have them recorded on film, write little booklets, whatever that is, so that it's there. We have a, a documentation, of, documentation of the experience that we've got a, a part of history that we are obviously writing in the, the true context of it, of what it, what it was, and showing the human side of, of, of this movement experience, not just the political or the economic, but the toll on the experience experience that human people have because that's the bit that I think I find more so much more interesting and that we don't have so many of these kind of specific sort of life story work and and ca capturing information so that we know what it was like to make that journey and also we pick up stuff that we that's been missed like the trades that I mean I was interested last year to do a small project on trades people and I did some other work and published a little booklet from some 12 life story work on tradespeople through the Windrush generations. So we can show that we're, we're more than, you know, just, it's important to talk about through police and crime and killing and shooting in the black community, but we're more than that. And I think a lot of airplay goes to that side. Okay, it's contemporary and it's important, but, you know, try not to lose the, the historical evolution of all the birth, the breadth, of life and I'm so much more interested in the everyday life 
and life experiences of people, the untold stories and the bits that we haven't yet completely and fully documented. So thank you all for coming. And it's been wonderful. And I hope we can keep this relationship going as and as Andrew said, we will, you know, hope, yeah, get more stuff together and let this grow and, and have some good documentation to share. So I just have one thing that I needed to tell you and share with you, because we do understand also that, you know, the Windrush generation have been going through, sorry, the Windrush yeah, generation and um, have been going through quite a lot in terms of um, migration and having their paperwork and everything completely authorised. And that's what we call the issues that have been occurring through the Windrush scandal. So it's where people, as you know, have been um, denied access to housing and that because of the new measures in immigration law since about 2014 in this country, it's highlighted some of the issues that some people had not managed to go through the naturalization process. So there is a government campaign to try and redress that problem. And I know that a lot of pe some people have been on, you know, denied entry back into this country if they left this country for a holiday or an extended time, or they've been unable to prove their debt documents um, to get their British, British citizenship because they never traveled since leaving here. But as you know now, you need your birth, part birth certificate, you need your passport or your driving license or something to access you to get anything in this country almost. So if you can't you know, organize your, your citizenship and your passport documentation, it's really, really serious. So there is a compensation scheme for anyone who's found in that position that they've been in this country, came as a young person, didn't manage to, to um, do the documentation to naturalize when it was came about in the early 1980s. So I'm going to just give you some information about who to go, where to go to get some information to help you with that if you know anyone in that situation or if you're in that situation yourself. So I'm just going to show you, share with you a few things if you just bear with me and um, then we'll, then I'll give it back over to Shelley to do her final bit. Can you share this? Can I share the screen? Please, please do as well. Have you heard about the scheme that they gave the grant, the government? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you heard about it. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm going to just share about, yeah. Okay. That's fine. You're okay to share, Audrey. Thanks. Thank you. If only I could find it. I'll give it this. I have it on WhatsApp, isn't it? Everyone's... Oh, it's gone. I don't know why that's happened. Is everyone... What are you seeing? You're oh. seeing my... Are you seeing my... um? Your name. Oh, it's here now. Yeah. Let me just go back. I don't think it, it didn't quite mm. do what I wanted it to do. Um, PowerPoint, this one, share. It's showing you, you're seeing my documents, aren't you? Yeah, my documents information and advice support. Yeah, that's, I'll stop sharing. That's not what I'm asking it to do. Okay. Um, <laughs> You know what? Let me just go back. Let, one second. Let me just. Yeah, it's. I can see it, and I'm clicking on it, but it it's not opening it. Oh. So let me just try one more time. Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll just um pop it over to you. Um, I pop. Oh, you know, hang on. Let me try one more time. Mm, here it is. I think there's a. Oh. Mm, hang on, why is that? Oh, hang on a minute. Crazy. Here it is. Right. Everyone seeing? Yes. Yeah. Um, so let me just go to the beginning. Okay. So we have here, there's a thing called the Windrush Compensation Scheme, and that's for people from the Commonwealth. And who is eligible? It's a compensation scheme, as I said, for people who could, haven't yet managed to have their full documentation in place and get yeah. a passport. So the Winters Compensation Scheme is available to the people of all ages and nationalities, including those from Africa, who, who are who, those from African, Asian and Caribbean backgrounds, um, particularly the Commonwealth countries, as it's called. <clears throat> so how do you apply for it? There are forms, the many forms. So this is the website which I'll share and leave with Nadine, sorry, um, with um, Shelley, who will make it, you know, you can 
have it there and she can pass have it for the group to um, access this email. There you will find all the forms, oy, all the forms that you can use. There are different forms to fill in. So you fill in a form. Um, if you're either claiming compensation for yourself, for a close family member, or if you represent someone's estate, or it shows you there's another form about how to depend, how to claim, depending on who you are, and if you are in the if you are in you if you are in the UK at the moment or overseas and unable to travel back. There's another form you know that you can understand by reading the relevant form guidance before you apply. So all that information is on this government website. There's a list of all those forms there. If you click on this, I'll share that. So, um, what else? So, in, also, there's information and advice and supporting. nine to five you can get help from this phone number or you can access the application form or you can ring um, a number another number here to help you access the digital application form so there's a lot of help and support for the different forms depending on your circumstances and the last no that's it so that's no, it i'll send this these slides to shelly so you yes, can have this information and it's all, yeah. most of this information comes from the government website about the Windrush compensation scheme. So that's I have that. got it, but um, sometimes yeah. legal people in it as well. Mm -hmm. Can I, I had it um, sent to me. Um, someone was going to apply to some grants from a, um, one of the groups, but then they talk about legality as well in it. Yes, there's a lot of law in it. Yes, it in fact, is. There's a, there's a solicitor. Anybody can fill this up for you. That's why they ask asking people like BME and people like that to apply for grants to help them to make awareness and how they can guide the people. Yes, thank you. Definitely. Sorry, can I ask a question, please? I know we got to go over. Can mm -hmm. I ask a question? Go ahead quickly, Marcia. Thank yeah, you. I'm from... I, I know of this lady, um, she's, she's from the Caribbean. Her husband is African and her son born here. Yet they take her son and send him back to the Caribbean. Oh. Yeah, how do, um, you know, what advice can I give her? Where to go? Who's, uh, if you either um, contact, this information here has got phone numbers for help and assistance. And when mm -hmm. you ask on this page, I suppose, you know, one, this, this page here, when you go for the support, okay. either the phone numbers, ask for legal, them to put you in touch with someone who can help you with legal advice. Yes. Okay. There Very is someone simple. called Jacqueline, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Oh. Gone off my brain, but there is there, these these people should be able to put you in touch because there is, it is very much involving legal work as well. Someone yeah. has to take on your behalf sometimes, you know, and, you, and it's even to fill in the forms. So these contact numbers and the Windrush BME forum to the Windrush Need. Digital yeah. Hub and 